I picked up one of these Arctic Air Ultras a couple of weeks ago. When I got it, I saw the price compared to what I had paid for that Eva Polar at about $100 less. After I got the unit and started getting it set up, it didn't feel like it was really going to be able to provide any sort of meaningful cooling. But once I turned it on, I was shocked in a good way by <laughs> quite a few different things. So let's dive in. The first thing is kind of what I've already mentioned, which is the cost. It fluctuates up and down depending on where you're looking to purchase it from, but it's about $40. Really quick rundown of an evaporative cooler. It takes in hot, dry air, and it has either a single stage or multiple stages of water that comes from a tank that is then dispersed into the air as an aerosol, and eventually it vaporizes. And when it vaporizes, absorbs energy and decreases the air temperature around it. And then that air is pushed out through the front through a powerful fan. This has two stages of cooling, as you'll see in a moment. If you'd like to know more about evaporative coolers and how they work, I recommend this video. It goes into more detail on my HVAC dilemma and the idea I had to even inquire about these particular devices. The construction is nice. I mean, it's all plastic, as you might expect for a $40 thing and the molds of the plastic are actually really nice there's not any jagged little parts or or pieces that don't seem to fit well together or wrinkling in the plastic but it's put together well and has a loop around the front that moves so you can adjust the airflow wherever you want it to go all the bits that you know move or you press feel like they're not going to break or are really wobbly or anything like that. So this has a drawer, it kind of locks into place when it's closed, but you can pull it out and it reveals the filter. This little door is to cover the tank that is used for the reservoir for the ultrasonic transducer that basically acts like a pump and sprayer to, to facilitate the operation of the evaporative cooler. The buttons themselves are clicky and nice. They're definitely not dome switches. They feel like they're micro switches. So that's a nice touch. The Arctic Air Ultra, it has two big things that I think move it away from other evaporative coolers and helps it stand out. One is it has an incredibly powerful fan in it. And I'll get to that in more detail in a moment. But also it has that like a dual stage cooling. We're inside the unit. And I'll pull out the drawer completely. You just take the filter out and angle this door up and then it pops out. And inside you have the ultrasonic transducer, which basically is like, think of it as a speaker, but it's operating at very high frequency at about somewhere between 100 and 150 kilohertz. And that takes the water that's sitting on top. You can see it just underneath the tab there, down to the bottom, and then is sprayed out in a mist inside this chamber. The fan then blows that air out toward the filter, which you can, and it's recommended to pre-soak prior to using it, so that you get the already cooled air coming from that mist, and then whatever water in that mist that's not evaporated, and is still like in an aerosol or a droplet form, will cling to the filter and keep the filter wet and then the evaporation on the filter acts as like a secondary stage that then additionally cools the air. As far as operation, how do you use the thing? While this one doesn't have the fancy tank that the Evapolar did, it does a pretty good job of keeping water inside the unit, but it is possible to spill. I mean, this is not really water tight around here. And so if you fill it up and you start moving it around, I've gotten it to splash a couple times and it came out the front. But when it's running, there's very little water that actually stays down inside the bottom of this tray. Picking it up and moving it around is fine. So setting it up, took the filter out, gave it a good rinse, and just soaked it under running cold tap water. And then plopped it in here. Doesn't want to go in. There it goes. Close this up. Filled this full of water. And then it comes with a DC barrel jack and power adapter. It's not USB powered, which is a little bit of a surprise, 
But I think what they are trying to do is make sure that you have this thing plugged in to a wall outlet so that you minimize the possibility of any mold or anything building up on this filter. Because when it's plugged in the wall and you have it on, if you forget about it, it'll just keep running until it's out of water and it'll dry the filter out. Whereas if you have this plugged in via USB to a battery bank or something like that, well, if that battery bank goes dead, then it could just be sitting with water on the filter. And if water sits on this filter for several days without being cleaned or, or dried out, it will eventually start to mold. I think it was a compromise, but one that makes sense. Also, this unit does use more power than the original Arctic Air, which you'll find out why in a moment. I'm not going to use this actually right now for demonstration. I actually hacked a cable to work with it via USB because that's what I wanted to do. So here's the cable and it just goes to a USB cable that I had lying around. And I'll plug it in, turn it on. That's the high speed, medium speed, and low speed. It also has a little night light built in, which you can actually have on, low, or off. The fan is pronounced. You will definitely hear it when it's running. It's not hard to talk over it. It didn't really bother me after like a day or so of just kind of getting used to it. There are ways to dampen it, which I'll get to in a future video, but just running it on its own, it reminds me of a window air conditioner that I had that had the fan running all the time and the compressor would cycle on and off, but you'd always have that fan running. And so this is kind of like, similar to that. Different type of sound, but it's the same sort of continuously running fan sound. It is definitely louder than the Eva Polar, which I think was around 50 dB, and I think this one comes in at around 61 dB. But overall, for the performance, the little bit more noise you're getting out of the unit is well worth it because of the cooling performance. So daily use, I've been using it primarily to augment the air conditioning. It was secondarily being used for personal cooling. This thing would run pretty much 24 hours a day, and I would turn it on, fill it up two to three times a day. It, it would go about eight hours on a fill up. I would fill it up once then and let it run overnight. It does have a strange bug, it seems, that after 12 hours or 14 hours of use, it just kind of turns itself off. I actually bought a second unit and was testing that, and they both seem to do it. And I'm not sure if it's a feature or a bug, but it's still a bit strange. So what I do is just before I go to sleep, turn it off, turn it back on again, and it's it's good to go. I'm not sure why they did that. It's a little bit of a it's a little bit annoying, but uh, I think it's probably something to do with if, if you don't touch the unit for a long period of time, when it has water in it, it will run all the water out of it. It will turn itself off. Anyway, something to keep in mind when you're using this unit for long periods of time. Once a week, I'll take the filter out and put it in the dishwasher on the normal cycle, just to give it a good clean, get that temperature up to kind of kill anything that's on it. I have had to descale the filter one time so far because the water here is quite hard. And so this is an example of one of the filters I have not yet cleaned. And you can see there is some mineral buildup on there. And all that's really needed here is just to take this and put this into a half and half mixture of vinegar and water. And I do that for about a half an hour and rinse it off. Then I'll put it in the dishwasher and it comes out clean. All right, cooling performance. I'm gonna break this down into three different test profiles. One is the minimum performance that I saw after running several tests with this. The middle is the like nominal performance, kind of the average performance that I saw. And then the third test is using this filter in a freezer, which is pretty awesome. So first, the minimal performance. I'll be breaking this down in more detail in a future video, but I'll just give you the ranges from low to high. On the low side, it averages around 623 BTU per hour, and on high, it averaged around 857 BTU per hour. So comparing that minimally to the, that's already double, the Evopolar in its minimal configuration. And that is with a nine degree temperature difference between the intake and exhaust. So nominally, I saw between 917 up to 1,261 BTU per hour. And that was with a temperature difference of about 12 and a half degrees between the intake and the exhaust temperature. Now, 
This has the option, as it shows in the filter, for maximum cooling, place a wet filter in the freezer until frozen. Now this for me is super helpful because in the area where I live, I have the option for variable rate energy pricing. So for me, it's advantageous sometimes to put this in the freezer and store energy in this filter when costs of energy are really low and there's low demand on the grid. And then when it's really hot out during the middle of the day and cost of energy goes up, I pull this thing out, I stick it in here, turn it on, and it produces it in a very intense cooling effect. And the amazing thing is, forgot to mention before I get to the numbers, that you can actually pull this out, keep it in the freezer, and keep this thing running, and it still provides a cooling benefit because the first stage is always running, as long as there's water in it. That's that, the ultrasonic element that's running. And then when you add this, it just adds an additional stage of cooling. So I'll just put this in the freezer for half an hour or so until it's frozen, and then take it out and get a huge boost in cooling, as you might expect, though it is temporary again, as you might expect. And so let's talk about that. The minimum cooling I saw was 2,018 BTU per hour. And the maximum cooling I saw was 2,775 BTU per hour. That is approaching 60% of a window air conditioner, which is drawing somewhere around three to 500 watts. And this is drawing maximum eight watts. It's amazing. That said, the cooling effect on this lasted about 15 minutes, but multiple times now, that has proven to be sufficient to help the air conditioner when it's struggling to actually decrease the temperature in our place to drop the temperature down a little bit, increase the humidity up a little bit so that the efficiency of the air conditioner increases and it's able to then continue cooling down the room. It's like five or six times now I've used this thing frozen and it's really quite amazing. Even if you don't have one of the, or not on one of those variable rate energy pricing programs, if you have an air conditioner that's struggling, it might be more cost effective to, to put this in the freezer and pay the penny or so, it's probably even less than that, to the energy that goes into freezing this and to help your conditioning out as opposed to letting their conditioning run for however long it will run. So that's the cooling performance. Let's talk about efficiency. This unit does use more power than the Eva Polar, but it's for good reason. It doesn't have any fancy lights on it or anything like that, except for the little night light sort of thing, which draws about a tenth of a watt. But the fan in it is over two times as powerful than what's in the Eva Polar. And that translates to 120 cubic feet of air per minute on high, about 100 cubic feet of air per minute on medium, and 88 cubic feet per minute on low. Power consumption. On standby, you can see it's just drawing about eight milliwatts and about 1.6 milliamps. Pretty low. Let me turn it on. Draws about 8.4 watts on high. 4.9 watts on medium. About 3.2 watts on low. If I turn the little night light off, it drops it a little bit by about 100 milliwatts. So the energy efficiency ratio, given about 350 cooling watts on average, with about 8.2 watts being consumed by the unit, gives us an energy efficiency ratio of about 42.7, which is considerably higher than the EV Polar EV1500. And that's primarily due to the two-stage cooling system in this unit and the really powerful fan that moves a lot of air. So overall, what do I think? How do I feel about this evaporative cooler? It's a good unit for the price. The ease of use is there, the performance is there, the energy efficiency is there, and it's not trying to pretend to be something that it's not. It's not flashy, it doesn't have a whole bunch of other functions on it that don't really improve its ability to efficiently cool. That's the Arctic Air Ultra. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments, and I will see you in the next one. Take care.